Welcome back! Right now we've got Adobe XD open. This is the first screen that you'll see when you're using the program. Uh, this is the welcome screen, also known as the home screen. And here you'll see that you can start a new file. You can also open an old file and review recent files that you've already been working on. But the most important section for new users is right here, where you can select different prefabricated screen sizes that Adobe XD office offers. It shows you different devices that you can make user interfaces for, such as mobile devices, like the iPhone, different web screen sizes that are common for different browsers, and even social media uh, story sizes. You can also create a custom size here if you so wish. But for our case, in our project, let's go over just a regular iPhone size. So let's click that and open the program. Excellent. So right here, we've opened the program, and what you're seeing now is the workspace. And in the workspace, you can drag the screen around. And this is a hotkey that you can do by pressing the space button. And you can see the little hand appear. And then if you click the screen, you can drag it around. That way you can easily navigate your workspace as you're working in it. Very important thing to learn right off the bat. You can also zoom in. And there's a few ways to do that, but the one we're going to learn is a very quick short one using, um, for Mac users, the command key and then the plus sign or the plus button to zoom in. For Windows users, that's the control key and the plus button. And then for zooming out, you do the same thing, command button and the minus button, and that'll zoom out. And for Windows users, yet again, that's control minus. So those are two very important things you're going to learn. After you've seen our workspace, notice this big white square in the middle of the screen. That's an artboard. Everything that you design for your user interfaces is right in this screen. So, for example, if you add a square or a circle or whatever shapes and items that you want to add into your user interface for your iPhone device that you're designing for, you can see that it's going to be right in here. And notice how it cuts it off when you've deselected the artboard. That's because the artboard acts as a mask. It covers everything outside of the artboard and everything inside it displays to you because that's the size of the screen that your device is that you're designing for, in this case, an iPhone 13. So let's just remove everything in there. And now, whoop, and now I want to show you, if you click the name at the top of the artboard, that shows that it's selected. It's highlighted in blue. And let's zoom in so you can see that a little better. Excellent. And when you click the name of that artboard, you can also rename it to better organize things. So if you want to name this home, you can. If you want to rename it screen, something generic, if you'd like, you can do that too. But let's just keep it the uh, name it was originally. Next, a neat little trick that you can do is duplicate the artboards. So. If you'd like to make multiple artboards, because you will when you're making many user interface designs and different screens for those designs, you can do that by whoop, um, going to the Edit tab and, click, and clicking Duplicate, and it'll duplicate the artboard when it's selected. But you can also do it by selecting the artboard and pressing the hotkey, Command-D, and that's Control-D for Windows users. and Additionally, if you want to do a little bit of a long-term version of whoop, a long-term version of duplication, you can do copy and pasting, and you can do that by selecting it and the hotkey Command C for copy, Control C for Windows users, and Command V for paste, Control V for Windows users as well. And now we have all these different artboards on our screen, and that's fantastic but maybe you'd like to move them around. If you select an artboard, you can drag it to a different location on your screen relative to different other artboards. And if you do this, you can notice that, well, you're seeing these little lines that are popping up. That's just showing how it's aligned. They're guidelines. And it shows you that you can align things in the center of other objects, on the top of them, and just it shows you how far they are from those objects as well. And you can also notice there's thicker guidelines that appear too, and that just shows that different multiple objects are equidistant from each other, in this case, 70 pixels. So that's an interesting thing. So we'll move this here, but maybe I don't like it there, so I can just undo that by pressing the hotkey Command-Z to undo, and that's 
command or control Z for Windows users. So we've got all these um, really interesting things we're learning immediately, and that's exciting, but we're going to keep learning. So other than what we just learned about creating all these different artboards and interacting with them, let's get rid of them. We don't need all of them. We can just select them and press delete, and that should remove them. Let's focus on one. What can we do with one artboard? Well, let's zoom back in and see it. When we select it, we can resize it. Notice these little white circles all around it. That's how you can resize it. You can select, you can click one of those little circles and drag it, and you'll see that you can change its width, you can change its height, and so on and so forth. It's very, very useful if you decide that you don't want to work with the um, screen size that you're working, making a design for. And when we resize it, check out this little di dashed line right here. This is an interesting one. When you have a prefabricated um, design template, like in this case for the iPhone 13, you get these lines that show the viewport height. It's the viewport height indicator. And the viewport, again, is basically saying this is the maximum height of the device that you're designing for. So if you drag it down, then the viewport's going to be bigger. If you drag it shorter or higher, the device is shorter. But let's undo that with Command Z. And boom, we've got it back to its normal height. And having that viewport indicator there allows you, when you're resizing your artboard, to uh, be able to scroll on your screen. So let's add a little square here, and I'll show you that in action. So if we go to the very top of our uh, Windows XD program and to the right, you see this little triangle. You can click it to get a desktop preview of your applications that you're designing for. And we'll go more in depth in this later. But you can see our square down here, and there's a little scroll bar that appears when we need to scroll. We can just click it and drag it down, and we're able to scroll. And that's how the viewport indicator works. But let's undo all that and just take it back to its normal size, and then it won't need to scroll anymore, as seen in this preview. No scroll ball, no scrolling. All right. So now that we've got that figured out, and we've learned about the viewport heights, and we've learned about artboards, let's talk about other things that you can use to design things in the program itself. So one of the most important tools that we're going to be learning about, and we will keep touching this tool over and over again in, this, in these lessons, is the Properties Inspector. And that's the little toolbar to the very right of the program. If you see it right here, everything's grayed out right now, so you can't do anything. But if you select anything, even an artboard, like so, highlighting in blue, you see that it comes to life. It gives you details about what's happening. In this case, it's telling us the width and height of our artboard, the position of our artboard, and other various details that we'll go dive into later in, lesson, in the lessons. Um, let's see. And on the opposite side of the Adobe XD program, we've got the toolbar. And it gives us a list of tools that we can use to interact with and create designs for the program. But before we dive into the details of that, there are three different types of toolbars that you can use. And those are differentiated by these three tabs here at the very top to the slight right of our toolbar tab. We've got here, it says design, prototype, and share. So these three tabs are very important. They allow you to um, touch different processes in your design process. So for example, if we go to the Share tab, this will allow you to share the prototypes that you've been making. And we'll talk about that later. In the Prototype tab, it allows you to make a prototype to share later down the line out of the mockups that you've designed. And of course, the Design tab allows you to make those designs. And the Prototype and Share tab have similar tools. In this case, the arrow and the, on the uh, magnifying glass icon, but let's focus on the design tabs tools and we'll talk about those. So right here, we've got the select tool. It allows you to select things. When it's highlighted in blue, the toolbar is what you are working with at that moment. And if you hover over it, you can see the hotkey for that is, is revealed. In this case, it's the V button. If you hover over the lower item, it's the R button. So let's switch to the R one. And you can see it turned blue, and our select button has turned gray because it's no longer active. So the current one that's highlighted is our rectangle tool that allows you to drag and drop rectangles. 
So if you click and drag, you can make different rectangular shapes. And below that is the circle tool, or the ellipse tool. It allows you to make different ellipses. Below that, we've got the polygon tool. You can make triangles and other neat shapes with that. And right below that is the line tool. It doesn't make a shape, but it just makes straight lines. If you click and drag, it allows you to make a line of any length that you desire. Right below that is the pen tool. We're not going to cover that too much, but most Adobe programs have a pen tool where you can click and make different shapes one by one by clicking it. And you can also make them curved by clicking and dragging. Below that is text. We'll be using that a lot more. And if you click, you can see that you can zoom in here. Text is formed. And you can modify the text in the Properties Inspector, and we'll cover that as well. And last but not least for this section, we've got the Artboard tool that allows you to click and create an artboard of a similar size that you just made, or click and drag to create your own sizes. Excellent. So now that we're done with this part, let's go, let's look a little bit lower. Right down here, we've got these three icons at the very bottom of the screen. This first one is the Libraries tab. It allows you to review the different assets that you have in your program. And this is something that we'll go over further, but allows you to reuse different elements and properties for the designs that you're making. Right below that is the Layers tab. Everything on the Layers tab are all the elements and the artboards that you've created in your workspace. So in this case, it has all the list of these different shapes. And if you select the artboard, it shows the artboard that you've selected as well. But regarding the shapes, it's easier to tell because there's many here. It lists it from top to bottom, which item is on the top and which item is on the bottom. So in our case, we zoom in with our Command plus the hotkey. You see it's the text right here. But if we drag that on our, on our layers panel below the rectangle, it's hidden at the very bottom. So the top item is on top and the bottom item is on bottom. And then after our layers panel, because that covers for the most of it, we've got the plugins panel. And the plugins are really useful. They're tools created by developers that allow you, that you can download for Adobe XD so that you can use them later in your designs. And it helps make things a lot easier. So now that we've covered Adobe XD and how the program works, let's work together to make a user interface design with it.